I'm gonna take a wild guess and bet that you're here because you have an intersection probably near the start of your city that is causing a bunch of traffic backup in your city skyline save. Am I right? Was I close? Well, today we are actually going to do exactly that. We're gonna look at sticky intersections in city skylines and see how we can solve them by managing the traffic using different techniques. Before we begin, I'm gonna be very honest with you. Generally, these issues can be solved by looking at your city holistically. So zoom out and take a look at your overall build. This is the second video in a series. I'm gonna ask you to watch the first video before you even attempt what's in this video. The first video includes concepts like road hierarchy, connectivity, transit, walkability. If you have a healthy city overall, you generally won't have too many sticky spots like this in city skylines. So make sure, I know it doesn't sound as interesting as like crazy roundabouts or like super heavy interchanges or, or whatever you're expecting here, but please go back and solve your fundamental problems and learn about road hierarchy. Did you do it? Did you do it? Are you back? All right, welcome back. You already learned all about road hierarchy. You already learned about connectivity and transit and walkability. And you're here because you still want to learn how to solve that individual intersection in city skylines. You did it. Congrats. Let's jump right in and, uh, and start working on some intersections. If this is what your city start looks like in city skylines, I find that incredibly admirable. Good job on keeping the roads small. One obvious solution to this would be to increase the number of lanes to allow just to increase the capacity of the junction overall. But if you have access to traffic manager, you can always make a roundabout in this situation. I'm gonna make kind of a medium roundabout. So four units all the way around. Just create that initial node, grab my curved road tool, and we're just gonna go four units by four units counterclockwise for the, uh, for the way my roads are running here. And just to keep things small, let's leave it as is and set up priority signs. Shift, control, click the roundabout, I'm going to let this run for, I imagine it'll take probably a minute or two to clear out. Is everybody in the groove? Well, stick around. We're just warming up, baby. And there we go. Very, very clean solution to the whole thing. That's good. It does require a traffic manager, but obviously a roundabout is a really good kind of low to medium traffic solution. What I'd like to do next is, uh, is explore that with an upgraded road. Let's see how an intersection looks once we've added more lanes. What we have here is actually the same traffic density. Nothing has changed on the map, but we are running a vanilla traffic light. So just the basic traffic light that automatically appears when two avenues cross in the game. Clearly we're using a four lane road, quite a bit wider, but this is a more typical scenario for the opening to people's cities for that first intersection that usually becomes the problem. You'll notice that traffic is now allowed to stack up next to one another. So instead of this line being twice as long going all the way back, they can stack up next to one another and then travel right through the intersection all at once. So increasing lanes at the end has that desired effect of moving traffic a bit quicker. Um, certainly this could be upgraded to a roundabout, but you don't really need to. Obviously the vanilla traffic light is handling this density, so I would I would not recommend uh, doing anything unless you want to change it to a to a roundabout. We already know a roundabout can work here, but now that there's more lanes, a traffic light can also work here. Let's see what happens when we turn up the traffic a little bit and uh, then we have to do some problem solving. There it is. We've reached a point where the vanilla base game traffic light can no longer pass all of the traffic in a cycle or two. So it's backing up on all sides. What I'd like to do now is show you my main, honestly, my main traffic solution, like of all time. This this will cover 98% of your issues, in my opinion. This is, this is what I love. I call it blowing out the intersection. <laughs> we are going to add some lanes using an asymmetrical road. So you'll notice here, this is a four, four lanes entering the intersection, two lanes leaving it. So a four plus two asymmetrical road on all sides. What that does is it further allows traffic to stack up to the front, which when, when the light turns green, it's all allowed through all at once very quickly. 
What it also allows us to do is have dedicated turn lanes on all sides. So check it out. I'm going to set up a basic traffic light, um, a basic timed traffic light, I guess I'd call it. So I'm going to go to traffic manager, timed traffic light, control click the intersection. That will also have influenced my lanes. It's added two left turn lanes at the end. I really don't want that. Here's what we really want. Dedicated turn lanes in all directions. So you can see here, we've got a dedicated left turn going left and they can pick whatever lane they want. Notice I'm not using lane connectors. I, I really don't like using lane connectors here because that forces traffic to keep to a lane. Just use lane arrows on your intersections. It's way easier and much more effective. So left turn can go to whatever lane they want. Right turn can go to whatever lane they want. And you have two through lanes. So the lane math is solid. Two through lanes going into the two exiting lanes on the other side. Other valid choices would be maybe a five plus three, where you have five lanes on one side. So dedicated right turn, dedicated left turn, and three through lanes of traffic. Or you can manipulate this if the road hierarchy dictates that there is more traffic turning left than going straight, feel free to go in with the turn arrow and create two left turns, just like there. Two left turns to support that left turning traffic, and the lane math still works out wonderfully. Um, one other thing to note when you set up this configuration is that there will be a little traffic jam at the node leading up to this. So I've done two segments on all sides, and you can see it here. This car is trying to get in and it's wasting the time of all the traffic behind it. So I do recommend having them keep to their lane before they enter the intersection. So click your lane connector tool, click that node, control S will say, keep to your lane on your way in. It's not so important on the way out, but that's just a side effect. Click control S, right click to get out of that. Also in this case, I would like to increase the time. The default timing for the for the basic timed traffic light is three seconds minimum, eight seconds maximum. I'm gonna go around on all sides and do like 10 to 15 seconds as a, as a good minimum. So it'll always run for 10 seconds with a max, or even maybe even 20. It really depends. The, the more traffic, the longer your cycles may need to be. Excellent, that's all set up. I'm gonna hit start, and we should see traffic starting to stack up. Let's put it on three speed. And what we wanna see is full lanes at the front. We wanna see a full uh, full usage of the dedicated lanes, full usage of the through lanes. And we should see clearing out happening in essentially no time. Very nice. That looks good to me. I'd say traffic is managed on all sides. Clearly it was going all the way to the ends on all sides before, and now it's uh, it's down to this amount. For this situation, I might even take the northern approach and increase its timing a little tiny bit. But overall, like I said, the four plus two trick, four lane, four plus two lane asymmetrical into a well-timed traffic light is like gold. You'll see this a lot in real life as well. Um, I, I don't typically recommend increasing the lanes much beyond this. There are other solutions that you can use if the traffic is still not working. You're probably dealing with maybe a highway's worth of traffic, and you should probably look at your road hierarchy and see if you've incidentally created a highway in the middle of your city that needs to be addressed. But for most intersections of this size, 4 plus 2 will definitely do the trick. Let's say you want to take a slightly different approach to the same problem. We're here with the same traffic density that the light was just doing. What I want to do is set up what's called a turbo roundabout as an alternative to the traffic light. Um, I'm going to make it the same size as that original one. So four by four, I think is the way to go. Yeah, I do like a four by four roundabout personally. It's a very medium. If you saw it in person in real life, you go, oh, that's kind of a big roundabout. But in terms of city skylines, this is a pretty medium size for things. So the setup for a turbo roundabout is as follows. 
We're going to click Priority Signs in Traffic Manager, Shift, Control, click the roundabout. That will automatically apply all of the roundabout rules found in Traffic Manager here. So all of these under Policies within your Traffic Manager settings, roundabouts at the bottom, all of these rules are then applied to this now priority road that is the traffic circle. So I'm going to imagine that maybe left right is our priority direction. So let's assume that that's the main road because it happens to have more traffic on it at the moment. So let's go with that. What I want to do is set up a, a turbo roundabout variant. We're going to take the lane arrows and we're going to adjust them. So from the right side, going east to west, they'll pick their lane before entering. They will be allowed to turn right from the right lane and also go straight. The left lane, they'll have to go straight. When they get across, they can turn right from the left lane and dedicated right on the right lane. I'm going to make a symmetrical change on this side. So this traffic coming from west to east is allowed to go straight and right from the right lane and must go straight from the left lane. And on the opposite side, they're allowed to turn right from the left lane and they're forced to turn right from the right lane. So what that does is it marks this road as priority and gives it the ability for these two lanes to keep to their lane and come out the other side, having kept to their lane. So it allows for two lanes of through traffic all the time. I'm gonna run this on three speed and kind of see what happens. I actually don't know, I haven't tested this yet. I, I don't know that this will clear this traffic density, but I'd like to see it in action. I will also give it the same benefit that we gave the light um, of lane connectors approaching for maybe, I don't know, two or three. I'll give it even more runway than I gave the light and uh, we'll see if that helps. But I want them to keep to their lane so that traffic can get to the end without doing that, without doing that little thing where it backs up. We want as much space as possible to allow that to not happen. I was really hoping to see it clear on one side. In my experience, if you can get the roundabout to fully clear on one side, that frees up the next side and there's kind of a domino effect of it clearing. I haven't seen that happening just yet and this side is looking pretty gnarly. So one more thing you can do, this is a little dangerous and kind of not, I mean, it's not really dangerous, it's a video game, but you can take that priority direction, uh, click your junction controls there, junction restrictions, click the node and allow that, that priority traffic to enter the blocked junction and they will just fly through there. So what I'm doing now is allowing that traffic to, to fly into the intersection much faster than it usually does. If you do this on all sides, it's almost guaranteed to back up at this density. But if you do it on two of the sides, the two that you've deemed priority, traffic will just rock and roll through. And if we can get two of these sides to clear, the other two may also clear like so many dominoes. Let's see if let's see if that works. I'm actually going to flip flop what direction is allowed to enter the blocked junction now. So we're going to disable it on those priority sides and enable it on the sides that are having trouble. And we'll just hope, hope that that can move the traffic down to a uh, manageable level for this intersection. So I think that's enough. I've, I've waited long enough on this. Oh yeah, there's no way. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's allow the roundabout the same benefit that the traffic light had, or a similar benefit. I'll use that asymmetrical road leading up to it. So we get four lanes going in and two lanes coming out. Crazy thing. This is actually the equivalent roundabout to our four plus two lighted setup. I'll explain why in just a second. But take a look, we are still using that same four plus two road. We're going into a five lane roundabout. So you'd, you'd think that that doesn't quite line up. There's a reason for the five lanes. 
So in the four plus four plus two lighted setup, you have a dedicated right turn, you have a dedicated left turn, and you have two dedicated through lanes. The way that you achieve that with a roundabout is two exits. The first lane goes into the first lane of the roundabout and they exit immediately. So that's your right turn. The second lane from the right goes into the third lane of the roundabout, which is then pushed to the outer lane to get a through. So that nets you a through movement. The third lane in goes into the fourth lane of the roundabout, which then is pushed to the second lane, which is your second through movement. So that's really where the trick lives. And then that fourth lane in is pushed to the middle. So the fifth lane in, and then it can move to the third lane out, which is then pushed to the first lane and nets you a left turn. I know I said a bunch of stuff just now, but what's really important is using two exit, uh, two ways out of the roundabout, so two right turns to get out, and then you have to be able to skip a lane to force traffic to use it the, the way that you need it to. That is the equivalent roundabout. Other than that, it's set up exactly the same as you'd expect, yielding on all sides. It just doesn't always look like it because the space is so large, like this car, this poor car. There, there are yields set up before the flood of comments that says that say you didn't set it up right. I totally did. I'm doing my best <laughs> based on what the game has given me. That is the equivalent. If you've made it to this point and you're still having traffic backup, you need to move on to an interchange. You've created a highway. You've created a highway intersection of some sort, and you either need either need to change the context of your city, or you need to create an interchange. With that said, I have a bunch of videos describing interchanges, service interchanges, system interchanges, how to set them up, how to build them, where they go in context. Um, feel free to ask about it if you'd like, but I've covered inter interchanges aggressively on this channel. But that is essentially it. Those are the, the basic to intermediate principles of traffic management in City Skylines at the macro level and now also at the micro level. Thank you for checking it out. Everyone, I try to make a couple of videos a week here on YouTube, so feel free to subscribe. Uh, I also stream twice a week over on Twitch, so if you're looking for that live experience, come over to Twitch and, and say hi. We also have a Discord server. If you have further questions or are looking for further discussion on traffic, intersections, interchanges, city builds, mods, all things City Skyline related, I'll be over there too. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.